Today I'm going to install this new vacuum pump from Dorman, part number 904-857. And the goal is to replace this faulty pump that's down here. So this is actually going to be the second time that I've replaced it. And the reason I'm replacing it is because I'm getting code C1252 vacuum pump control circuit performance and P258B electric vacuum pump performance. So what happens is on the Penastar equipped JKUs, uh, the booster needs a vacuum to operate well, like any other vehicle, but the Penastar doesn't create enough at low speeds. So they've got a line here. So they've got this T-junction here and this line goes down to that pump. So what happens is because I have a, a winch, uh, the two stock bolts with these two nuts is where the pump used to live. I've located the pump there with the uh, aftermarket bumper and this pump's actually out of a caravan. So this pump has failed on me before. I found one in a junkyard as a temporary fix, but with all the water crossings, it's below the water line. So it's often getting wet Water gets into it, it gets cruddy, and it jams up. So down here is where you have the stock electrical connection. Uh, these two bolts are 10 millimeter if you're still using the stock location. Uh, my bumper actually still uses 10 millimeter fastener so that it won't be too bad. And this is a the connection here for the vacuum. So this here, you pop it out, and depending on location, maybe easier with a small flathead screwdriver. Pop it out something like that. You gotta make sure both sides are out because that actually retains it in place. Or you can just pop it off. And if, if it's not stuck, it'll pull right out. So I know when I first changed this pump, it was really difficult to disconnect because it was stuck on there real good. Uh, you may have a few zip ties along the way that need to be cut, so cut those off as needed. What I've found easier over the years with these clips is it's often easier to get them out once they're, or get them unplugged once they've been unseated from where they're, they're living. So in this case, push it down. Should come out. And once the plug is out, some of these have a retaining clip. This one doesn't. Press. Press down and pull, and it's up. So once the two bolts are out, you gotta wiggle it out. So depending if you have a stock bumper or a winch, uh, this may be easy or a challenge. And then there's a line at the other side. So here you can see I added a zip tie when I installed it last time. Remove that, remove the line. So here we can clearly see how there's a bunch of buildup in the pump. I've taken one of these out apart before and it was just full of corrosion. Now there's two hoses that are gonna be removed. This one is the fresh air, I guess we could say to the little pump. This is the side where it's pressurized. So this goes up behind the grill and as I wiggle it, you can see the two hoses here. So I'll show a different shot after. But the, there's one that literally loops up, does a little bit of a candy cane. Don't know how well you can see it, but there's a clip down here that has to be popped out before it can keep going. There. And now I should be able to just pull out this line, unless there's another one further down. There's no so there's another one all the way down here. It's really hard to, to see from the top. You got to find a way to pull that one out as well. And then the whole line should be able to come out. 
So with the pry bar, I was able to finally pop it out. So let's see if I can just pull it from the bottom. There, that's out. So now you've got this new wire that you get to fish down next to the rad and connect it down here so that you can reconnect the the signal lead. Now you've got the wire at the top. Do what you can to route it cleanly so that it's not in the way of anything that moves. And eventually you'll have it out. You'll want to connect. Try to get all that crud out first. You want it to connect, clip. And this one seems to have a nice little retaining clip, so you just want to make sure that it slides in. If it wants to slide in. So that it won't pop loose. There we go. Over time. There. Now it's in. And you just clip it into that original hole. So I'm going to use the second one just so that the harness is a little further from the winch. So now there's three bolts to remove. They're all 10 millimeter, ABS unit and two on the fender. And this is where the bracket is gonna slide into place. So you're gonna take the pump off the bracket. Just be careful, there's a few washers below it. You don't wanna drop that, it's somewhere in the engine bay. So I'll keep that over here for now. And now we get to install the bracket into place. So I've moved this bucket in the past when I changed the master cylinder. So there's clearly some misalignment right now. So I'm just taking all these bolts out, moving the bucket up and down. Just want to make sure that it's sitting correctly so that these two bolts aren't going to be forcing against the clip here to be, to be in place. If I can't get it to budge, I'm going to probably have to re-bend or clear around this harness so I'm not putting any side pressure on it. So here you can see where I cut it. It's, it's almost an inch long, maybe three quarters of an inch and that's definitely going to give me good clearance around that connection so I won't have to worry about it rubbing and as I start screwing this bolt in that rubber grommet's going to squeeze a little bit and it'll help me bolt everything up so I'll just put some paint on on the cuts I'll put brackets installed lots of clearance around that connection start with the bolt at the ABS pump it's definitely a, one difficult to align and two difficult to access and once it's properly threaded then you can start doing the two on the fender. So now time to drop the pump into place and start taking care of the connections. So when I remove the line from the engine I missed that there was a T or a, a split right near the uh, this bracket just underneath it. So ideally this would come out. Of course the the part of the hose that I don't need is the part that slid out so I'm just going to cut it right after I'm definitely going to have enough length, especially once I add in this little extension to be able to get to it and it'll make for a nicer install. Actually, I can see that my cut was at an angle, so I'm going to cut it again. Straight cut. It's going to seal better. Maybe it's just the fact that it's reinforced and it just doesn't want to cut straight. Okay. Now it's just a question of finding an angle where it's going to come into the, to the pump. Ideally not touch anything hot. There. Like the sound of that click. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. Hope you'll watch my other videos. Thanks and have a great day.